Hey, and welcome to the first video of the video series Advent of Vim 2025. I'm committed to upload one video each day for the next 25 days, talking about something Vim related or new Vim related. So since this is the first video, I was thinking about why not start with opening Vim. So let's look at a few different ways how we can do that. So these are a few example files here, and let's see how we would go about opening some of them. So the most simple way is if we would type in Vim and then the name of a file, right? So that's quite simple. So if you don't know how to exit Vim yet, you would have to wait like 25 days because <laughs> I'm gonna release the quitting Vim video as the last part of the series, probably. So there was a cut right now because I quit Vim and I don't want to spoil anything. So how about if we want to open multiple files at once? Let's do Christmas Vim MD again and also like, I don't know, new Vim holidays. And now you see we still have only this one file here. But if we do an LS, we see in our buffers, there's another buffer opened and this contains the other file. So we could switch to that using B and the buffer number, for example. Now we could use the switch to alternate buffer key binding to switch between them really fast, but maybe you wanted to have them side by side. So let's quit Vim again. I'm going to cut it out again. And now let's see if we use the dash capital O flag here. What happens now is we open both files, but you see we have two windows, one on the left and one on the right. Each of them takes up half the space available. Let's quit again and see what else we could do. So we learned about opening multiple files up in multiple buffers or in multiple splits even at the same time. But what if you wanted to open them in multiple tabs? You can use the dash P flag for that. And now you see on the top here, there is a little buffer list here with Christmas Vim and New Vim Holidays and another tab. Oh, I can actually click these. <laughs> but you can also use uh, GT to go to the next tab. But I guess you already knew that because you actually prefer the tab way of working here in Vim, right? Otherwise, you wouldn't have wanted to open these files in different tabs. So let's quit Vim again and let's see what else we can do here. So the next thing I want to show you is opening up a file at a specific line number. So let's open up another file here. Let's see. Let's do CLI Wonderland or something like that. And if I wanted to open it and have my cursor on the line, I don't know, 23 or something, I would specify it with plus 23, open it up and you see, oh, this file doesn't even have <laughs> 23 lines. So we just jumped to line 21 here, but let's try again. Let's uh, close this up again. And let's say we wanted to start at line 13 or something. Now you see our cursor is at line 13, but because I clicked somewhere in the line before we jumped uh, right to a column here at the end, column uh, 41. So let's close this up again. I always say close this up. It's it's not a close up, it's close this. But all right, uh, let's, let's clear out the screen here. The little column mix up we just had just reminded me of something else we can do. We can still open the file here at a specific line number. And let's say we want to open it at a specific column number also. We can use the dash C flag and then we can pass in another command that should run after that. So let's use the norm command. And let's say we wanted to jump to column seven. We can just say seven and then the pipe. That's the command for jumping to a specific column in, in Vim. So let's open this up and we should land in line 10 and on column seven. Let's see if this worked. You see we're in line 10 here and this should be column seven. We can see this in here in our status line here down there. So this also works. You can, of course, run any other command like this as well. So maybe you wanted to jump to the first occurrence of curl or something like that. Yeah, let's let's try to do this. Let's close this file again here. I'm just placing the cursor somewhere here. I don't know why. Yeah, let's close the file. And now we just run Vim again, CLI Wonderland, and then let's just use the C and we're gonna search forward here. So forward slash and use curl because we wanted to jump to the first occurrence of curl and hit enter and see what happens. I see we 
didn't actually land the cursor exactly here. I'm not sure why, but we searched for curl and uh, if we hit N now, we should also go to the next or the previous occurrence. So use your imagination how you could use running a command after opening the first file here. What I just realized is I showed you the opening of the files in the vertical split, but I didn't show you how to do it in horizontal splits. Let's try this. Let's see some other files here. Uh, what else do we have? Okay, 12 days again. And if you use dash lowercase o, this should open it in horizontal splits. Maybe if you want to see the contents of two files that are very wide or something like that. I closed it again. You can also open files directly in diff mode. Uh, there's a diff mode in Vim. I made a video about that already, but let me show you just quick again. So let's start Vim with a D flag and then just pick. Okay, there are too many files, I guess. Let's just pick these two. It's probably not the best way or the most um, useful way to diff these because they are not common at all, but you get the idea if you have some, some diff you want to, want, to, want to see and work with here. There's also a way to open files in read-only mode, or actually there are two ways. I'm going to show you those two. Let's say you want to open this very important file here, uh, Christmas Vim MD again and you don't want to accidentally edit this file. You can see on the bottom here, it says read only and read only here, also in this um, last line. And if you actually want to try to edit this, you get a warning, you're changing a read only file, but you can actually type something in here. And if you want to close now, oops, it says um, read only option is set. You can of course just force quit here. So I did a little spoiler on quitting Wim, but there's more to it. So wait for the last video in the series. But there's an even stricter mode. If you open it with the M option, then you can't even, I don't know, I'm hitting I here, cannot make any changes here. It prevents you actively from making changes to the buffer already. So also could be quite useful if you just want to view something and don't mess it up. Now let's do something different again. Let's open up some of these files, like in this horizontal splits, and maybe we will do uh, another split here and open up some other file here. I don't know, what don't we have open like this? So we have three files here, and what we can actually do is save this as a session with the mk session command. So if we close up Vim, I did say close up again. <laughs> if we close Vim again, and we do an ls here, we see there's this session file. Vim created a session file here. And we can do something very cool with this. We can use vim.s. I'm not sure if it's lowercase or uppercase, but we will see. And the session file name, this was not what I meant. So <laughs> let's close again. So it's actually the uppercase s. And now we see we opened the session here. We have our three windows here with the files open so you can save a lot of setup time with sessions. So this video is actually getting kind of long, but I just want to show you one more way how to open Vim and that can be really useful in, in many cases. So you can actually open standard in inside Vim. So for example, let's do an LS here and pipe this into Vim. And then you have to specify the hyphen, which means read from standard in. So you can pipe standard output into Vim. And here we got the output of the ls command just right inside Vim. Oh, and by the way, I use Ezra for my ls command. I've got an alias for that, and that's where we have these fancy file icons here. I hope you learned something new, had a little bit of fun here. So until Christmas, there will be lots of Vim content on this channel. Come back if you want more. Leave a like, subscribe to my channel. Also, I have some membership options. So if you want to support me even more, please consider joining the membership. Also, I will be releasing my first paid course at the end of this year or maybe even on Christmas. Hopefully it will be finished until then or maybe like a, an early, early version of that will be released. So if you're interested in that, I'll create some kind of landing page where you can leave your email where I will notify you when the course is finished, when you can buy it or maybe even pre-buy it on some discount or something like that. So I hope you have a great holiday time. See you around and take care.